1990, Johnny Gill stepped on the scene in the R&B world with My My My. Opening the eyes of the females across the globe. When this hit song dropped on the scene and hit the airways, it was a rap. Johnny Gill was looked at as a star. It was almost like Johnny Gill became a star overnight, a shining star. Johnny Gill was an album that you can listen to back to back with all the hits that came one by one, track after track. Johnny Gill would be labeled as one of the only singers that went from a solo artist to a duo to a trio to a superstar group like New Edition. Maybe not in that order, but moving around within the music industry, really getting his fame on. But through the fame and success of Johnny Gill, there was a lot of unsuccessful things in the timeline of Johnny Gill's life. And here's the story of Johnny Gill on Urban TV On Demand. You feel the magic in my head. Johnny Gill was born and raised in Washington, D.C. In the local area, he grew up on Southeast G Street. He was the youngest of four brothers, Jeff, Randy, and Bobby Gill. His mom was a strong black woman raising four boys, and his dad was a minister. His parents and family called him Boogie, short for Boogaloo. Johnny and his brothers at a young age was into church where their parents, father specifically, rehearsed with them and created a band for the church. The gospel group or band was called the Gill Special. But out of the group, Jeff, which was the oldest, just didn't like singing. As years went by, at the age of eight, Johnny Gill's parents separated, leaving his mom to raise four boys. Johnny, at the age of eight, took that information pretty hard, and it bothered him throughout his life. Their mother still kept the band together as they performed the gospel. Johnny got comfortable singing in front of the church. Although he was the smallest out of the four boys, he had the biggest voice. After a while, their mom took the boys to play at different churches around the state. Johnny Gill went to Sousa Junior High School in Washington, D.C., where he kept up with his singing career. He would always go to school dressed up. He never liked to wear jeans and short sleeve shirts. He always wanted to have a suit and tie when he went to school, which is not really normal for young kids. In high school is where he bonded and met Stacy Lattisar, who was also a young singer at the time. Stacy Lattisaw was already singing songs that was hitting the airwaves. And that song was Let Me Be Your Angel. Stacy Lattisaw never knew Johnny Gill could sing until one day Johnny Gill attended one of her local talent shows. And that's when he performed his song and blew Stacy Lattisaw away. She never knew that he had a voice like that and ran upstairs and told her mom that she had to come down and listen to Johnny Gill sing. And from that day, Johnny Gill and Stacy Lattisaw friendship turned into a relationship. Stacy Lattisaw and Johnny Gill were dating, but because she was so young, her mom was very protective of her. She used to have to sneak out and go see Johnny Gill on their dates. Johnny Gill and Stacy Lattisaw were together like 24-7 throughout the week, they would record together and her father would record them and send the tapes to Atlantic Records. Hemi Allen of Cotillion Records would hear Johnny Gill's demo. Johnny would end up landing a record deal at the age of 15. From there, Johnny Gill would fly to Los Angeles and record his first debut album. Johnny Gill's album was released on April 6, 1983. Johnny Gill didn't just know how to sing, but he also knew how to play instruments like drums, piano, and bass. And while the producer, knowing that Johnny Gill had the skills to play his own instrument and sing, they together released the first single called Super Love. 
Super Love gave the audience a real hard time to believe such a powerful voice was coming from a little body. Although Superstar didn't make it amongst the majority of R&B listeners, it still had its place in its time. The record label kind of struggled with Johnny producing singles because he was a 15 year old kid with a 25 year old voice. You couldn't really market him to older people because he was a younger guy. And you couldn't really market him to younger people because he sounded like an older guy. But then the record company found a way to appeal to both audience by combining Johnny Gill and Stacey Lattisaw to do a duet. And that song was called Perfect Combination. Perfect combination. Both Johnny Gill and Stacey Lattisaw made the perfect combination singing together with voices that blended like cake. Perfect Combination went up the charts at number 10. The connection between Johnny Gill and Stacey Lattisaw was so unique is because they really had a real connection because they were dating. So the songs, you were actually able to feel the real deal. Because the duet did so well, the record label brought Johnny Gill back in to do another solo album. It was called Chemistry. Johnny Gill was 19 at the time and did a whole ballad called Half Crazy. Cause I'm half crazy. It was written by Linda Creed and Loni Jordan. Although Half Crazy was a great song, the record company still once again struggled with marketing Johnny Gill. With the single Half Crazy, it only made it to number 26 on the charts. And the Chemistry album made it at number 50. Stacey Lattisar and Johnny Gill relationship wasn't doing good either. And the album Chemistry didn't do good at all as well. For a while, Stacey Lattisar and Johnny Gill had the perfect relationship in an album called Perfect Combination. But as Johnny Gill started to do more solo stuff, it kind of left Stacey Lattisar at a standstill. Johnny Gill then flew back to LA and met up with his manager. His name was Bill Underwood, who was the guidance of Johnny Gill's career. Johnny Gill would then land a deal with Motown, which is where he met New Edition. During that time, Johnny Gill and Mike Bivens had a conversation. Mike Bivens was looking for a new singer to replace Bobby Brown after being voted out of the group. Mike Bivens asked Johnny Gill would he be interested in joining a group, and Johnny Gill accepted. But it wasn't all peaches and cream. The group members actually had a problem with Johnny Gill coming in. They felt like they didn't want to split any of their money with Johnny Gill. Johnny Gill was a good guy, though. He didn't try to step on nobody's toes and played his part. Although he knew how to sing, he accepted the fact that because the rest of the band members didn't want him to come take over, he accepted whatever they wanted him to do, Johnny Gill did. The group would put together an album as New Edition and Johnny Gill was a member. Ralph would still sing majority of the lead parts and left one song for Johnny Gill to sing. And that song, was boys to men. But Johnny Gill didn't like the song. He kind of felt like they gave him a song that nobody else wanted to do. Although nobody really cared too much for the song, Johnny Gill had to take one for the team. And he said, if I'ma sing this song, I'ma tear it up. And that's exactly what Johnny Gill did. The Heartbreak album ended up doing successful numbers, and Boys and Men would be one of the songs that would help it get to its destination. Johnny Gill entering New Edition was just one of the few great things that happened to the group, and because of that, New Edition Heartbreak album went double platinum. With the Heartbreak album going double platinum, it was the first time Johnny Gill experienced the real true meaning of fame. Now great things were happening for Johnny Gill joining New Edition. But then 
Johnny Gill finds out that his manager got locked up for drug trafficking. It was unbelievable news for Johnny Gill to hear that his manager was going to do life in prison for racketeering and drug trafficking and other charges that was put on him during the time. This turned Johnny Gill's life career plans upside down. After hearing this terrible news, Johnny Gill was forced to make a decision on his own to put his career from being a boy to a man. Through all the success of the touring with New Edition, Johnny Gill went back into the studio to craft his next debut album called Johnny Gill. Motown put Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis together and also Babyface and L.A. Reid to craft his album. And with the superpower producers behind him, Johnny Gill's first single smashed the charts. And that single was Rub You The Right Way. Johnny Gill was now a man. And the voice and the man look went together like jam. And working with the whole new edition team gave Johnny Gill a little bit more to add to his shows. And by working with New Edition, Johnny Gill got all his skills up, including the dancing. Rub You The Right Way went up to the top of the R&B chops at number one. And with that single in heavy rotation, Johnny Gill slowed it down with another R&B song called My My My. Slide on your lipstick and let all your hair down. And that R&B ballad ran up the charts to number one as well. My 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 moved women tremendously. Johnny Gill ended up dropping two more top five singles, Wrap My Body Tight and Fair Weather Friend. Johnny Gill was now sent a stage with two hit single songs, followed up by two ones that he already released that went number one. Johnny Gill was now back into the fame but this time by himself with the album, Johnny Gill, Double Platinum. Johnny Gill was more comfortable with his voice than ever. Knowing that the ladies loved it all over the world, Johnny Gill knew exactly what to do. Johnny Gill's success was moving all across the country. It was time for him to head back to the studio and cook up another album for all the fans he created from his whole career of music. This album was called Prerogative. Fail to say, with all the success that Johnny Gill had, this album failed to even crack the top 10. Johnny Gill just could not understand why the album did so bad and poorly. And because that album fell, Johnny Gill began to take more hands-on control of his music. Johnny Gill started to get more involved with writing and playing. And as a result, Johnny Gill cooked up another single called Let's Get the Mood Right. Johnny Gill, Let's Get the Mood Right was released in 1995. Let's Get the Mood Right just didn't land well with Andre Harrell, who was head of Motel at the time. And because Johnny Gill refused to take directions from Andre Harrell, the album suffered. It was a bad time for Johnny Gill. It was a bad time for Motown overall with all the confusion within the label. Everybody with the new edition all split it up and did separate albums. Bobby Brown had his big solo album. Ralph Tresman had his big solo album. They all had successful albums. But after a while, the success from all these individuals start to go down. And it was time for them to get back together to build it again. And that's when they were brought together to do New Edition, the reunion album with all six members. And putting the group back together with all six members was a great idea and a bad idea at the same time. Cause Bobby Brown just didn't like Johnny Gill at the time. It was tough for all the lead singers in the group to accept Johnny Gill in the new edition. The band gets back together and produce an album called Home Again, which cooked up a new lead single called Hit Me Off. Let's spend an hour in the shower when it's nice and Hit Me Off ran up the charts at number one on the R&B charts. 
It was a song that had all the new edition members share their light. Hit Me Off held the number one spot for three straight weeks on the R&B charts. And from there, New Edition together sold out multiple tickets at their comeback tour. And from there, Johnny Gill and the rest of New Edition was back on tour. When all six members of the New Edition on stage together, it becomes a whole nother level of performance and entertainment. Not only it was great entertainment, but it was also more like a competition amongst each other. They all wanted to get the biggest screen because everybody was sharing the light now. But the fans were so happy, they were glad to see them back. And this is when all the egos within the new edition group began. To a point where individual group members would just kind of have their own clique and show up to the concert, but not like together as a group member. Ralph would have his team. Bobby would have his team. Mike Bibb would have his team. Everybody would have their own team. With the new edition stars back together again, they would start showing up to shows extremely late, like two to three hours, keeping the fans waiting because of the big egos everyone got from being superstars in the past. There was a lot of problems going on with each and every individual with their lives, especially Bobby Brown. Through it all, Johnny Gill would be one of the only ones out of the group that would stay consistent and show up every night and be on stage. Through it all, the Home Again reunion tour was shut down, leaving a lot of open dates unspoken for. With all the trouble within the group, they just couldn't get it together. A lot of money was lost. And with the promoters spending millions, New Edition was on the hook for millions. And that would include Johnny Gill. With all the lawsuits and tax issues that New Edition had, Johnny Gill would fall behind in debt. Even though the group would sell out everywhere, they were struggling, including Johnny Gill. By the summer of 1997, Johnny Gill coming back to the New Edition reunion ended up being a nightmare. And although he never missed any concert dates, he still shared the same legal responsibilities with the rest of the group members so everything that went wrong within the group with lawsuits johnny gill shared the same amount of pain after the home again tour was over with all the lawsuits and court dates the group had johnny gill's phone would be flooded with calls from lawyers and accountants and the money kept going down the drain johnny gill's legal costs was well over six figures. He was forced to sell a lot of his personal possessions just in order to pay his bills. Although Johnny Gill gave up a lot, the biggest thing he gave up was his home. Johnny had to start all over again. Everything he had worked for went down the drain and he had nothing to show for it but his fame. Once again, Johnny Gill is back in the studio where he started again. But this time he got a call from Gerald Levert with an offer to be a part of a group called LSG. While Johnny Gill been struggling, he would accept the offer to join the group LSG, which would include Gerald Overt and Keith Sweat. The whole idea was Keith Sweat. He was always a solo artist and he wanted to do a group thing. So he reached out to Gerald Overt and told him about his idea and Gerald Overt tagged along. It was just one more member they needed and that was Johnny Gill. Because Johnny Gill was going through a lot of struggles with New Edition and was in debt, he jumped up on the offer and thought it was a great idea, in which it was. Johnny Gill, Keith Sweat, and Gerald Levert would go back to the studio together and cook up a new single. And that single would smash the charts with the song, My Body. You know you want me just like I want you. Never had a lover, never do the thing that I can do. Can it feel so good, baby? The group LSG was a brilliant move. Once again, Johnny Gill was back into the spotlight and touring around the world with 
Gerald Levert, and Keith Sweat. Johnny Gill joining LSG was a lot. He was able to bring the New Edition fan base and his own fan base to the group, as well as Keith Sweat and Gerald Levert. Together, they hit the stage and did their performances knocking down show after show. LSG, My Body went platinum and landed on the charts at number one. And it stayed at number one for seven weeks. So for Johnny Gill, joining LSG was another great move for Johnny Gill. But it didn't last long. Once they were on fire, the flames went out, Johnny Gill's career was back at a stand. Johnny Gill was no longer really a go-getter. I mean, he did it once by himself, but being in groups, it was a lot easier to carry the weight. And as you get older, it makes it tougher to carry the weight as a solo artist by yourself. So instead of being in the studio, Johnny Gill spent most of his time partying with the rest of the celebrities, hanging out with women and having fun. Johnny Gill's image would be removed from the public eye and a sparking rumor would come up that would crush his image forever. Johnny Gill would have to deal with the rumor of everyone questioning his sexuality. There would be rumors saying that Johnny Gill was hanging out with men instead of women at these parties. Fans would be confused with the rumor on whether or not Johnny Gill was gay. Johnny Gill would eventually have to answer to this rumor in order to clear his image and name. But Johnny Gill felt that he can just ignore it and not say anything. But the more that he ignored it, the harder the rumors would come at him. So Johnny Gill would face the rumors. He said what he had to say and had to lay low until the rumors fizzled out. Months after month and year after year, the rumors would finally fizzle out, but so would his career. And that's the story of Johnny Gill. Thank you for watching Urban TV On Demand.